Okay, let's uh, let's pray. Father God, we we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for enabling us to come together. Uh, yet another day that you've given us, Lord. What a privilege, Lord, to gather together in your name. What a privilege, Lord, to declare your praise. And what an awesome privilege it is to, to call you our Father. Yes, Lord, we, we just want to thank you for every good thing, Lord, that you bring our way, Master. We thank you for your presence, which is uh, with us every day, every minute. We thank you. We bless your name, Lord. Even today, God, we even as we seek your face, even as we seek you, God, we, we just want to thank you for your abundant grace which you pour out upon us. Lord, something that we don't deserve, you pour out on us, Lord. And uh, we thank you that your grace enables us, your grace empowers us, and uh, we thank you. We thank you for the hope that we have in you. We thank you for the faith, Lord, that we have in you. We thank you for the comfort. We thank you for the strength that we draw, Lord, from you, from your word, from your presence, Lord. We thank you. Lord, we acknowledge all this, and we are grateful for all this, God. And we are grateful for your presence, Lord, individually in each one of our lives, Lord. We thank you. And Master, we, we just commit ourselves into your mighty hands today. Um, let's just thank him for, for the grace, and uh, let's just receive uh, the grace of God. Um, Hebrews 4, uh, the fact that he has made a way for us to come to his presence, um, to the very Holy of Holies, to the throne of grace, um, and to receive grace and mercy. Right, so um, maybe we need his mercy in some areas of our life. We need his grace in some several areas of our lives. So let's just go before him today and say, Lord, we we need you. We need your grace. We need your mercy. Um, and knowing fully well that we can come, come, we can come boldly. We've been invited to come boldly, uh, and as Hebrews four talks about that. So. Yes, Lord, we, we come before your presence and we come boldly, we draw near boldly to receive your grace and to receive your mercy. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you for strengthening us. We thank you for empowering us. We thank you for filling us. We thank you for being so near to us. We thank you for quickening your word to us, Lord. We thank you for the change. We thank you for the transformation, Lord. We thank you for the renewing, Lord, that your word brings, God. We thank you. We thank you. We receive your grace and we receive your mercy this morning. Thank you, Master. Yes, Lord, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory at this time. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so we'll uh, we'll get started. What we'll do is uh, today um, we'll... Uh, uh, we just look at a little bit of uh, chapter 11, um, Ministering God's Word, Expecting Fruit, and uh, probably um, yeah, um, leading people to respond, just that aspect. Um, and, then, and then what we'll do is we'll, uh, you know, we'll go ahead with the sermon uh, presentation. And um, yeah, so I'll just uh, invite probably uh, maybe two of you or maybe three of you to present. You know, that'll be 12 minutes each, right? So we'll, we'll see how it goes. And um, and then and then we'll wind up for the day, right? Okay. Okay, so um, so let's let's start with um, chapter 11. And, um, you know, last class we, we looked at um, expectation and uh, what do we expect? You know, what fruit do we expect? Um, what result do we expect as a... Uh, as a result of our sharing, our ministering the word, what is it that we are, what is the end result that we are expecting, right? And we looked at several things and each one of you shared, um, you know, what is it um, that you're expecting? So uh, we looked at that. Okay, so, uh, and um, so what can we expect is what we looked at. And we, we saw several things that's it's all wonderful, you know, breakthroughs and healing and the Lord ministering and uh, you know, different directions. Uh, the way by which uh, we can, you know, we can pray and ask God to intervene and, and breakthroughs and, and several things that we looked at, right? Um, now, the reason why we can do that is because uh, of the of God's promise um, 
about his word what he will do regarding his word when his word is uh, declared when his word is preached and also the intrinsic power of god's word itself right so um so those things uh, those two uh, are very very important that god's word you know we looked at it earlier also that god god's word is uh, powerful that god's word is creative that god's word um, is uh, is living and uh, it is the truth which dispels lies and so on so um, god's word is uh, capable of bringing in change right and therefore uh, we can expect uh, all these things to happen it's because of god's word and uh, over and above that god has promised that he will do this that he will um, you know when his word is um, declared when his word is preached when the gospel is preached that he will give witness to it that he will testify to it um, with uh, signs and wonders and miracles and and so on so um, god has promised that and therefore we can do that and the other thing we see is that um, the, the the spirit of god god's uh, uh, spirit the holy spirit um he does he brings in the change he brings the conviction like we saw that he is the one who leads people into all truth he is the one who um uh, who brings um uh, conviction in people's lives he's the one who who, who brings in uh, conviction of you know their own uh, state or whatever state they are in their own state um and he's the one who convicts them them about truth and about uh, about uh, uh, about the lord jesus about judgment and so on about sin right um and uh, and when we um, look at god's word for example okay let's look at that first one that uh, god's word um uh, when we look at isaiah you know, probably we'll turn there Isaiah chapter 55 um yeah Isaiah 55 and um um maybe from 8 onwards when the lord says that his thoughts are not our thoughts okay so he's actually um you know we we looked at it um when we looked at the context we see that um, he's talking about the unrighteous man and also you know about the wicked person and uh, he's saying you know uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts right so let the wicked uh, forsake his way and unrighteous man his thoughts you know that's what he says in chapter 7 i'm sorry verse 7 um and then uh, the lord says my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts okay then he goes on to explain about his word uh, verse 10 for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what i please and it shall prosper in the thing for which i sent it right and then he goes on to say you know you shall go out with joy uh, and be led forth with peace and so on um so um the lord is describing you know what kind of um uh effect his word will have what kind of uh, result will his word bring right um the word that he speaks out the word that he declares um he says this is what will happen you know as rain comes down he, he, he draws a parallel between rain and and uh, and snow and it says you know the rain comes down waters the earth um that it may make the land bring forth uh, the potential that is already there and uh, and bring forth and bud and it gives seed to the sower so that the land may give seed to the sower and bread for food and then he says so shall my word be my word also uh, you know bring this kind of um, uh, of a, of an end right it shall uh, do the work of watering it shall do the work of uh, you know um uh, uh, bringing forth growth 
uh, in what seems to be there seems to be nothing but it shall bring forth growth it shall bring forth uh, freshness it shall it shall change it will change the whole environment okay um, now we see that um, the seed is there uh, and the seed is also like in to god's word you know we see in mark chapter 4 but here it's like into rain which causes what is embedded there to you know what is there as potential uh, causes growth of that stirs that up and um, and like in a catalyst uh, brings forth causes the earth to produce okay so um, so this is what we see that god's word can do mark chapter 4 of course uh, we read about the parable of the sower and the, the seed being god's word Uh, and uh, and the lord jesus teaching that you know this is what will happen the the seed is valuable because it is capable of bringing forth uh, uh you know uh, bringing forth a harvest 30 60 100 therefore uh, the enemy knowing the value of uh, god's um, knowing the value of the seed comes to take it away uh, there is persecution because of the seed of god's word and um, and there's all these cares and if you look at it you know all these cares and uh, cares of the world the lust of the flesh the desires for other things which we see listed there uh, what are they trying to do uh, they're trying to choke the word of god so the word of god being very valuable uh, but it is the seed okay and uh, as the seed we see that uh, god's word is powerful and right? god's word it carries god's power okay uh we see in the creation account that god just spoke forth you know he he spoke his word and he created he so he said you know let these things be and it it was so let there be and it was so so god's word uh, carries his power okay let's look at uh, a couple of other verses uh, hebrews 11 um okay hebrews 11 verse 3 by faith we understand worlds were framed by the word of god like the creation account and and uh, saying the worlds were framed by the word of god he released his word he spoke his word and things came into being um so that uh, second part of the verse so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible so it was made of the word of god the word of god brought forth the change brought uh, uh, brought forth things that were not there earlier right so the word of god created so we see that um, uh, the reason we can expect you know like each of us we declared and said you know this is what i can expect i want i want this change i want this uh, to happen to the hearer right uh, the reason is that the word of god is the carrier of god's power and the word of god can bring about uh, is capable of bringing about all all this change okay um so uh, the word of god the promises of god we declare the truth of god's word and uh, it brings forth fruit right so we can expect that fruit okay uh, one um, scripture that we see here is uh, this in 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 13 okay let me just put it here first Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13 for this reason we also thank god without ceasing because when you received the word of god which you heard from us you welcomed it not as the word of men but as it is in truth the word of god okay he's talk, talking about the Thessalonican church and this is how they Uh, esteem the word of god is how they receive the word of god and look at the second part um the word of god which also effectively works in you who believe so the word of god is received welcomed invited okay as the word of god as the truth and paul declares is that which effectively works in you who believe so it's received in faith and uh, when we continue to believe continue to believe um on the word of god uh in the word of god um, it uh, the word of god effectively works in us okay uh, effectively works in us and uh, let me just look at that word um effectively um i think it's that word energia uh 213 right okay um 
yeah, effectively work with energeo right which uh, which means to be mighty and uh, 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 which means to to be operative to show forth in power so um, which effectively works fervently mightily works um, the condition is in those who believe so it's mixed with faith it is received invited welcomed and uh, and believed on it's it's mixed with faith you know it's grasped uh, with faith it's held on with faith and and, and that's the only uh, that's the condition that we see well the word of god uh, is is god's power it's god's character it's god's nature that we need to esteem and uh, and this can produce and this will produce when it's received in faith when it effectively uh, you know works in those who believe so the re- so also uh, uh, that's that's the reason why we can expect fruit we are dealing with god's word we are handling god's word we are ministering god's word and uh, and we know that uh, it is god's uh, uh, it carries god's power and it effectively works in those who believe right so so we um, we share and we expect okay um and of course uh, the the holy spirit brings about the change the holy spirit is having those conversations with people is uh, making jesus real exalting jesus um and uh, and and bringing those things which the lord has spoken into people's lives and and when they receive it um, there is a, a fruit there is a result okay so um so what do we do as ministers to uh, to bring about you know of course we expect you know we don't uh, we 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 don't when we go and minister when we share you know it is with that expectation uh, it is with that uh, that faith knowing that god will bring about change you know whether it's visible or whether it's going to be a process whether it's going to be instantaneous well whether the lord will do that but we go expecting right? and i'm sure you know sometimes when we when we don't go with that expectation also the lord surprises right the lord uh, sovereignly does some things even when there is unbelief you know uh, he does that as well but you know the, the principle that we see in scripture is that uh, you know that we also as ministers uh, primarily that we go with faith we expect we go with the expectation we minister with the expectation right so um so we talk about those things which don't hold back anything you know if there is if there are some things that need to be uh mentioned which needs to be addressed um in truth um uh, firmly but in love uh, the truth needs to be spoken in love we do that and right? we address that so that uh Uh, so that the word of god whatever is blocking people from receiving that word you know whether it's um, whether it's unbelief or whether it's hardness of heart due to several things several other things you know um so paul addressed all that right to the corinthian church and and to who, whomever he wrote he addressed um the character issues he he addressed those things um you know and we read about uh, how uh, the prayers are hindered Uh, especially with regard to um, the husband and wife and uh, it says uh, um, uh, so that your prayer may not be hindered right so uh, be with them with understanding so that your prayers may not be hindered so um it is a speeder right first speeder chapter 3 um uh, chapter 3 verse 7 you know dwell with them with understanding giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered okay so so what are those things that hinder uh, it is uh, it, it is you know willful sin it is uh, you know it is these are heart issues like this character issues like this and lifestyles um, like this which hinder uh, you know uh, god's word from working in our lives right so uh, address those things you know as uh, uh, as led by the spirit of god uh, address those things okay um the other thing is to 
make the word of God relevant. Of course, we looked at that again uh, without compromising on the truth of the message. You know, that it's practical, that it's everyday, uh, that it's not something, that word of God is not something up there in the sky, but it's for us today, for the living of, you know, our everyday lives. Right? Um, and make it, uh, you know, illustrate in, in such a way so that um, people are able to receive that word and apply it in everyday you know, life situations, whether it's work, whether it's at home, whether it's with children, whether it's with, uh, you know, interactions with family. Uh, so people are able to um, relate and uh, make it um, and apply uh, practically the word of God, right? And uh, and thirdly, uh, uh, we pray, of course, pray for all the uh, pray for the hearer of the word. Um, uh, we can pray even as we prepare. We pray for the congregation. Pray. And it's like preparing the field, right? We pray, pray, and it's like tilling the field, and um, uh, before the word is sown. And so we pray and ask the Lord, Lord, prepare the hearts of the people, and uh, and even as we uh, minister with authenticity. Right, being real, and uh, and we say we minister the word with compassion, with boldness, um, um, and with integrity. Right, ha having um, having received the word in our own lives, and having um, you know lived that word in our own lives, uh, we will see uh, things happen, things change. So pray for the congregation, pray for your, your hearers, even as you prepare, um, if, and pray even as we you know minister. Right? We can pray even as we minister and you see certain things happening. You know, the Lord shows uh, in the audience, okay, uh, here, here's a person struggling with these issues. Here's a person, you know, having these challenges. You know, um, pray those Nehemiah kind of prayers, you know, prayer. You just uh, in between that conversation with the king, uh, he prays. He looks toward God, go towards God, and then he addresses the king. So, you know, those lightning prayers, uh, you know, even as we're ministering, we can pray. And definitely, as we uh, lead the congregation, you know, to respond to God's word, uh, we pray as well. You know, we pray and lead the congregation uh, as we minister, um, and and as we invite the congregation here as to respond to the word of God. Okay, so so we do that as well, right? So um, uh, Nehemiah eight. Um, let's look at that. Uh, I'm in chapter 12. Um, Nehemiah chapter 8. And uh, yeah, verses 1 to 13. Okay. Um, probably I'll just uh, uh, pick a few uh, uh, verses. Uh, chapter 8 and verse 5 and Ezra opened the book in the sight of all people for he was standing above all the people and when he had opened it all the people stood up and Ezra blessed the Lord the great God then all the people answered Amen, Amen while lifting up their hands and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground and uh, uh, you know so verse 8, so they read distinctly from the book in the law of God and they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. And it's talking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, verse 7 lists on a few names um, of the people who actually helped do that. Right? They gave the sense, helped them understand the reading. And uh, and then it goes on to say, uh, Nehemiah gives uh, further instructions. Um, and he says, you know, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and so on. You know, Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so the Levites quieted all the people. So there is, you know, there is a leading. There's a reading of the word. There is a sense. Uh, they are giving them the understanding of the word. And then also instructing and leading them how they should respond to it, you know, uh, so we, we see that happening uh, there. And also in chapter 9, verses 1 to 3, you know, we see that uh, they're giving specific instructions. Uh, they they stood, they confessed their sins, the iniquities, um, they read from the book of the law, and so on. Um, so uh, getting people to respond to the word of God. Okay, So um, uh, we, we will do that, or lead people to respond. Um, be sensitive to how the Lord is leading Okay, what is the Lord leading um, uh, you to do in terms of that conclusion? Right, and, uh, 
So uh, probably we can, uh, you know, if possible, maybe you can have a time of worship, and that's the best. Um, that's the best time to, you know, to seek the Lord, to pray in the Spirit, and ask the Lord, Lord, what direction? You know, now what, <laughs> Lord? You know, uh, and what direction would you want us to go? Is there any specific direction that you want us to take? Right? Uh, what do we do now? Do we, um, you know, do we? Uh, pray for it depends on the message of course you know if it's a if it's a message that that requires um you know uh, repentance um and uh, coming back to him and recommitting um so ask the lord lord you know uh, how do we do that can we go into that can we go into a time of you know do i just pray out loud and ask people to do that or just you know uh, keep it silent keep it quiet so that each person can engage with you you know just ask the lord and uh, and the Lord will give and the Lord will lead right in the direction. So, um, uh, so we can do that, right? So we will we'll, we'll uh, continue to look at this particular topic about how different ways of uh, getting people to respond to the word that was preached. We'll uh, we'll look at it, um, right? So this is something which is uh, which is quite important. Uh, you know why we can expect knowing fully well, being convinced in your heart fully well that you know. This is what, uh, it's not some uh, instruction that I've given, but, you know, God is there to back back up his word, uh, to uh, to perform according to his word. Uh, maybe just two more scriptures, and uh, and then we'll, um, we'll look at, uh, um, we'll go into the presentations, right? Uh, so let's look at Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12. Okay, Jeremiah 1, verse 12. says then the lord said to me um you have seen well okay this is uh, uh, the lord asks jeremiah you know what do you see and then jeremiah says i see the branch of an almond tree and then the lord said to me you have seen well for i am ready to perform my word okay i'm ready to perform my word and uh, so he, in other words god the lord is saying you know i'm i'm going to perform what the word that I released to you, what you saw, I'm going to perform. Of course, the context is, um, you know, he, he's saying, um, okay, uh, he's, he's uh, giving Je Jeremiah a, a vision or a picture, and Jeremiah says, this is what I see, and then he says, I'm ready to perform my word now, right? Um, but also, if you look at uh, Hebrews chapter 2, and I think we've visited this verse over and over again, Hebrews 2, um, yeah, uh, Hebrews 2, verse 4. God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with, with various miracles and uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Uh, it's uh, actually um, a question. And uh, uh, verse 3 talks about, you know, he's saying, how can we escape so great as salvation, which was spoken uh, by the Lord and was confirmed by those who heard him. And then you know, God also bearing witness. So um, as, a, you know, a, as a witness to the word, God bore witness. Uh, God, God accompanied this by releasing the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, he witnessed, he testified with all these things, with signs and wonders and miracles. So, um, so we we be uh, we need to be convinced in our hearts, right? Uh, and say, okay, God, um, this is who you are, and I'm going with the expectation, right? And let it be tangible, God. And uh, you know, there's nothing wrong in expecting that, Lord. Let it be tangible. Let, let me see it. Let's bodies be healed, minds be healed, and so on. Right. So, um, so we as ministers, we uh, uh, go with that expectation, right? Okay. Okay. So now we, what we'll do is, um, uh, we'll spend some time uh, with uh, doing the presentations. Anybody wants to? Uh, everybody's ready, and you want to start, step forward, and start the presentation. Uh, can I see your hand? Anyone who's ready, ready to go. Before I call out the name, I just want to ask if there's anyone. Okay, so shall we call out then? <laughs> okay, um, okay, let me just ask. Uh, mm, okay, I'll ask Mrs. Nalini. Uh, 
if you're ready, you can share. I'm calling out the names from the top row, and I just saw Mrs. Nalini. Yes, Pastor. Yeah, you're ready. Okay, great, wonderful. So, um, so tomorrow, so, I'll share. sorry. I, tomorrow I'll share because I'm not connected to the laptop today. Oh. I have put on PPT. I have done a little bit of it. I've done okay. most of it, but okay. it's on a PPT, and I don't have my laptop connection today. So okay. I'm locked okay. out with the phone. No problem, no problem. So Friday is good. Yeah, uh, Friday yeah. is also good. So anyone else who's ready? Um, yeah, Tayesha, uh, you know, uh, we looked at the, uh, we were looking, we listed all the sermon topics and also the, you know, the sermon title and what we expect in that. Um, I, I, I don't think you filled in that sheet. Um, yeah, you've not filled in that sheet. Uh, it's a Google Sheet, which is there in the in the classwork section. So you can just fill in that. So we are uh, going to present, make a sermon presentation or preach a sermon, uh, present a sermon for 12 minutes, right? So you choose the topic, you choose the title, and, and this can be, um, yeah, yeah, uh, you can select a sermon topic it can be your choice and the reason we put it is that so we don't duplicate someone else's topic so we know uh, what direction uh, the other person is uh, i mean what um, sermon uh, specific um, of the sermon so that we don't duplicate it so you can be ready with that right so it can be a minimum of three points three main points or a maximum of five points but the duration is 12 minutes only okay anyone else who's ready um in the first row, okay, yes, Atisha, good. Uh, first row, I see Sei. Sei, are you? Sei Adibola? Okay. Uh, not, not today, sir. <laughs> not today. Okay. Okay. Right, Sei. Felix. Um, so the thing is, Felix, you know, I, I just felt that it's good if people are ready, you know, uh, since we've had so much time, that if they are ready, and then, you know, um, then they can, you know, on that day, we can just choose rather than have a schedule. Uh, so that was my initial thought. But uh, yeah, if it is a schedule, then I can. But the only thing is, you know, if if on a schedule, they don't show up in class, you know, and then uh, no one else is ready, then that's uh, that's the reason. Okay. Um, okay. Who else? Abhishek said no. Mangi says, uh, so I'll go to the second row. Uh, or maybe third row. Tarun, are you about hearing God's voice? Well, sir, I haven't made the slide. I'll oh, the presentation, no? The Sorry, okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem. No problem. Okay, so I think I see. Uh, uh, okay, Rose is ready. Yes, Pastor. <laughs> Just bear with me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Go ahead. No, no problem at all. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have with us uh, Ms. Rose Salcedo. So, <laughs> so she can share. Yeah, just uh, one quick um, this thing. Let me just explain. So you can use a PowerPoint. Yeah, you can use any of those tools to um, share share the word. Right. You can use PowerPoint. Okay. Um, so, Rose, do you have a PowerPoint? Do you want to? Um... No, Pastor. I'm just going to read out. Okay. Is that okay. Open? Yeah, that's fine. You want to turn on the camera? You can. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, if you can't, that's also okay. Just like this. <laughs> just like this. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Let me just time you. It's um, yeah. You have 12 minutes. You can start yeah. uh, right now. Yeah. Okay. A blessed day to everyone. My sermon title is The Mindset of Christ, specifically exhorting on the humility of Jesus as a servant king. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. How many have how many times have we heard of these phrases? Have we really paused for a moment and thought about what they mean? These words were actually said by James, the Lord's earthly brother in James 4:6. I reckon, being one of the three who were the closest to Jesus, his words carry truth and what he means is real. 
Peter also said the same thing to the believers in Asia Minor in 1 Peter 5, verse 5, and even the wisdom of Solomon endorses it in Proverbs 3, 34. Supposing we don't know yet how to attain humility for ourselves, wouldn't the mere thought of God giving grace to the humble make us want to be humble? I would. Humility could mean a whole lot of things to different people, both non-believers and believers. For non-believers, the Webster's Dictionary defines humility as not being proud, not haughty, not arrogant, or not assertive. It is a character reflecting submission. On the other hand, humility for a follower of Christ could mean coming before Jesus in awe and reverence, despite of how high people may think of us. Humility is being able to lay aside preserving or defending oneself and instead say, I was wrong. Humility is positioning our hearts to be open to the corrections brought about by God's word. Humility is taking the focus off of ourselves and realigning our gaze to God. Humility that pleases God is a teachable spirit that is responsive to him and reflects him to his people. It is a malleable character, soft and surrendered enough to be bent towards his will. Humility was the greatest mindset of Jesus Christ while he was still walking on the earth. For him, the more humble a person is, the more great he shall become. He said in Matthew 23, verse 11 to 12, But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Or, in other words, a person who chooses to be humble, ironically, turns out to be the greatest. In this specific passage, Jesus was speaking to the multitudes and to his disciples. He was warning them against the scribes and Pharisees who were exalting themselves in their places of positions. Jesus cautioned the listeners not to imitate their actions, for although they appeared righteous to men, they were not righteous before God. Jesus identifies to his listeners who is the greatest of all, and it will be that one who is willing to be last of all and servant of all, and not those in the positions of power. For God is not impressed with the loftiness of man. In God's sight, to be the first is to be the last of all and servant of all. In contrast to this self-exalting Pharisees, the Son of God himself, Jesus Christ, made himself of no reputation. Paul said in Philippians 2 verse 7, Jesus took on the form of a bond servant and came in the likeness of men. Humility was the greatest mindset of Jesus Christ. Why? Because this is the very same God who created the universe, who rules over all creation, who did not only appear as a man, but took to his person the nature of and faculties and inferiorities of men. And as if these were not enough, he added in the nature of a servant. He humbled himself and willingly took the role of a servant. No one forced him to do it. Second, although he never sinned and did not deserve to die, he chose to die so that the sins of the world could be, changed, uh, could be charged to his account. Third, even if he became the scapegoat, he credits this act of righteousness on the cross to the account of all who believe and will believe in him. Jesus gave his life away, and then still he gave some more. Fourth, he died by the cruelest form of capital punishment, which was crucifixion. The Romans reserved the agonizing death of crucifixion for slaves and foreigners, and the Jews viewed death on a cross as a curse from God. Jesus' humility was his strongest and greatest mental attitude through it all. Jesus' expression and magnitude of humility can be seen in the contrast between Christ as God, who is the ultimate highest, and Christ as being made sin for all in a debased status. The measurement of these extremes no one could ever reach or fathom or even reenact or perform. Its effect is beyond eternity. It is so profound. 
Can we pause and think for a moment the expanse of humility Jesus possessed? Now think about this. What creator submits himself to be killed by his creation just to be able to serve his purpose to them as king? What God, who is the most innocent, pure, and holy, volunteers to acquire to himself all impurities and holiness and every sin known to man, and eventually be condemned and judged by his own loving Father, just to spare his creation the punishment they so rightfully and legally deserve? No one can express in words the magnitude of Jesus' humility. Succeeding Jesus' act on the cross, God followed it with the exaltation of his one and only Son. Jesus Christ's depths of humiliation was rewarded by God the Father's elevation of him to the highest exalted status. In Philippians 2, verse 9 to 11, the Apostle Paul wrote, Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven, those on the earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God indeed gives grace to the humble. There are countless rewards for choosing to be humble before God and man. For us today, who are the living followers of Christ, the rewards for godly humility are riches, honor, and life, whereas choosing to be self-proud leads to destruction. The God-given wisdom of Solomon says in Proverbs 11 verse 2, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with the humble is wisdom. The Hebrew word for pride comes from a root that means to boil up. It refers to a raging arrogance or insolence. This brings up an image of an arrogant behavior of a godless person. Such behavior always leads to shame or disgrace. Whereas in humility comes wisdom. Humility brings on wisdom because as we take on the posture that acknowledges our dependence on God, we also open ourselves to the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. And as we are transformed by the Holy Spirit, our hearts can receive God's wisdom and instructions to live right. In Proverbs 3, 34, God gives favor to the humble. Humility moves the heart of God. He pours out his blessings to the people who do what is right in his eyes. Therefore, just to name a few, the rewards for godly humility are true riches, honor, life, wisdom, favor, and grace from our Heavenly Father. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 2 verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He was referring to the humble mindset of Jesus Christ. All godly action begins with the renewing of the mind. Right thinking produces right actions. Our actions are the fruit of our deepest thoughts. Thinking and being like Christ are requirements not only for an individual, but also for the corporate body of believers. Together, we need to think and act like one being, like the person of Jesus Christ. Like all things, there must be a beginning. And for something to begin, we need to decide to start. We lay out the stepping stones for us to walk on in the pursuit of attaining Jesus' mindset of humility. Here can be some initial stepping stones. So imagine yourself driving a non-automatic vehicle. The first step, stop what you are doing that contradicts God's idea of humility. Second step, look at what God's word says about humility. Third step, listen to God's wisdom on why he requires humility. Fourth step, neutralize or shift your gear to neutral. Let go of the mind of being master of your thoughts, words, and actions, and let go of the mentality that says, I am the master of my fate and destiny, and I should be served. Fifth step, shift to first gear. Put yourself in the position, attitude, and perspective of a servant attuned to God's commanding voice. 
and then take on the mentality of, I am a servant, God must be served. Sixth step, maintain pace of your first gear. Stay on first gear until you are confident that you can resist pride of self and life and maintain humility of self and life. When acquired enough mileage and basic humility, shift to the next gear and take humility to a whole new level or to different spheres of influence. Final step, practice makes perfect. Don't forget to fuel up with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and regularly check maintenance with God's word. Take ownership of that mindset of Christ-like humility. Think it and be it. And do this not for the self-gain, but for the glory of God. Thank you. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you, Rose. I think we'll give Rose a applause. We don't have enough emojis here. Huh? Okay. Yeah, I think we can just put, put our hands up. And uh, good job. Yeah, very nice, Rose. Super. Um, yeah, and uh, I think it was very, very clear, uh, the, your rate of speech and, uh, oops, um, and how you presented it, very, very clear, um, clear thoughts and, um, yeah, clear points as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, you started by defining uh, humility and uh, what is humility um that was very nice um and also the uh, how you finished the application the car example the automatic car example um i think that was that was really uh, creative uh, the application of it um very nice very nice um uh, just a few uh, thoughts here uh, uh, some feedback here um if you can, uh, you know, with, with regard to the logical flow uh, arrangement of uh, material, um, you know, I, I I felt that even the Hebrew definition, right, um, that could have been earlier, you know, right at the top, uh, when you were defining what humility is, and uh, um, that could have uh, you could you could place that here. I think that would be um, that would flow well, um, and. Um, and also, if you, uh, I think, yeah, with regard to the examples, um, you had a few points, right? Almost, I think, five points about how Jesus um, is the example of uh, humility. Um, that was very nice. Um, uh, so similarly, if you had the main points for, you know, what you wanted to talk about, um, that would also help. And I guess, you know, if you were using a PowerPoint, uh, you could have just put that and, and that would help. Um, you know, some of the scriptures that you shared right at the top, you know, uh, I think you were just giving references. So uh, maybe again, you know, pausing there to give the references would help. Or um, you could just read out, you know, uh, the, the whole verse itself, uh, because of course you're assuming that people would take down the reference and check later. Uh, but if you, yeah, uh, so uh, you could just, you know, uh, read the verse itself. Um, yeah. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, that, that was good. So what we'll do is uh, on Friday, we'll continue with this and Rose, um, maybe um, you can share what you felt as you were sharing. Um, and what went into, uh, you know, putting the these thoughts together and uh, and uh, what happened when you were putting this together. And also, we'll have some time to, um, to ask the class to share about uh, what they felt and, uh, you know, what is it that uh, that they felt, you know, um, about the message also. Maybe, maybe one or two people will do that on Friday, right? Okay. Thank you, Rose. Uh, that was a, a good job. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Right. God bless. Okay. So, everyone, uh, Friday, uh, let's be ready. If not you, who? If not on Friday, when? <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Right? Okay. So, we'll meet, on, uh, we'll meet on Friday. God bless. Take care. Thank you, Pastor. Right. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Well done, Rose. Thank you for leading us. <laughs>